What's up, everybody? All right, it's uh, what June, uh, January 18, 2022. Local time is uh, 2021 or 8:21 p.m. For those of you guys who don't know military time or 24-hour clock time, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're southbound on Interstate 215 in San Bernardino right now. Just got past the 210 interchange. Gonna be going to the San Bernardino drop yard. Yeah, a place that I uh, go to so often. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be, I'm bobtailing right now because I just got my truck back from the shop. And we're gonna be picking up a load that's going to Houston. Uh, load uh, the Houston load is due on the 21st at 8 a.m. So uh, yeah, I have uh, yeah I have time to work with. There's a cop right there. Kind of look like a county sheriff deputy, motorcycle officer or something. All right, uh, I'm gonna take my normal route to the yard that I. Uh, a lot of our drivers, when they're coming from Barstow, Victorville area, uh, sometimes they'll get on the 210 eastbound and get off at Del Rosa, turn right, and just take Del Rosa straight on down until you get to uh, where our drop yard is, which is just south of 3rd Street. Uh, there's a JCT right over there going the other way. I can't, uh, can't tell who it was, so. Uh, I normally don't go that way though because all the north-south streets are a little bit subordinate and priority level to the east-west roads in town. So I tend to opt for taking 5th Street across instead from the 215 freeway. Okay, but there is a challenge here by with going this way. It's right. I have to go across three lanes right here, and this car is slowing down. It's not helping my situation. Come on, dude. There's two lanes. I don't know why that guy's slowed down. I was got pretty annoyed there because you know, watch, he's gonna pull away now. Exactly. Why did he slow down in the first place? A lot of you guys in your, uh, when you're in your, your cars, have that habit of when you're looking over your shoulder and you back off your throttle, don't even realize you're doing it. Even if it's just a tad, um, it's very noticeable to us truckers though, when we're going at a constant speed. Very noticeable. Very annoying too. So, when you guys are, uh, when you guys are merging onto the road, Pay more mind. Uh, try to pay a little mind to that. What you're doing there. You don't need to be slowing down. I mean, just keep your foot steady on the throttle, or whatever. Or even use your cruise control if you have to. I don't care. Ah, right, this is the. Uh, this is Fifth Street here. We're gonna head eastbound on it. Take it all the way down to Del Rosa. Turn right. Head south, and right after we get past Third, we'll make it right again. Uh, of course, those of you guys who are regulars on my channel already know, I'll probably already know this. Uh, but, regularly get people who are new to the channel. Or maybe even new JCT drivers uh, who found my channel but looking for a JCT or you know, anything about JCT or whatever. Just looking, you know, just looking for some helpful uh, footage to. Uh, make your own trip into here a little easier. Alright, 5th and H right now. Got the in and out burger here. Um, so anyway, why don't I have my car, my truck in the shop? Alright, so those of you guys who were, who've been watching my channel before I put it in the shop might know, uh, I had a check engine and MIL light or malfunction indicator lights on and I could tell the truck was a little bit weak on the power too. Uh, it wasn't super weak but it, it's enough to notice that I was you know, a few miles an hour slower on hills than I, I normally would be. Now we're 
Yeah, and I, I can tell with certain uh, certain weight loads and certain grades, I usually use a certain gear and even set my cruise control at a certain speed. So, like I say, a heavy load going up to 6% uphill grade, I might, I'll normally cruise uh, up the hill at about 20, 24 miles an hour or something. But I had that load that I picked up in, uh, was it Bakersfield or, I don't remember. Yeah, I wasn't at Bakersfield, I don't, I don't remember. I know I was going uh, going across um, the Hatchby Pass with it though. It might have been, uh, no, it was that Saputo load I think. Perhaps, I don't know, one of those. Uh, I got down to like 19 and I, I started to wonder if I was going to have to get down into my low side gears just to even make it up the hill. Uh, fortunately, I did not have to do that. My the sixth gear, which is the bottom end of my high side gear, my high range, is my, what's this guy doing? <laughs> Got some weird shit that goes on here too. Anyway, and I was also due a DOT inspection. I got it in there the day before my DOT expired. And I needed a PM and lube. I knew the fuel filters were going to need to be replaced because they were, uh, my fuel water separator, the, the filter in there was getting a little on the dirty side. The fuel was fine, but the filter itself, I could tell, was getting up uh, where it was a good time to change it. So. Got all that knocked out. Uh, they ended up figuring out that the, uh, um, the the check engine light came on because uh, it was basically used to you know, give a diagnostic signal for uh, low fuel pressure or fuel pressure issue. But what was weird about it? Okay, I'm gonna come over here because right after this light coming up here, the the lane I was just in is gonna end. So, get over here early. Um, Alright, this is Waterman Avenue, by the way. So anyway, yeah, it was fuel fuel pressure. I don't know if it was fuel rail. Yeah, like, yeah, it was something related to fuel system and low pressure, ultimately. But what I didn't know, what was kind of weird about that is normally, because uh, I have had problems where I've had a low fuel pressure problem while driving before and in high fuel demand situations i.e. when I'm climbing hills with a load uh, a lot of times when I do that my stop engine warning light will come on it'll, I mean, it'll come on while I'm climbing the hill but then once I'm uh, once I've topped out and you know, flattened out or going downhill the, the, the stop engine warning goes away so this time though the, the Stop engine warning lights never did come on. Uh, it was literally just a check engine and a malfunction indicator lights. That's it. So it was kind of weird. Um, I guess it was just enough low where I could feel a, a little bit of a performance hit, but that was about it. And um, by the way, they. You know, they, they got that, or they, they changed all the filters, did the DOT and all that, and then they, uh, they fixed the air leak that was on, on my um, my primary air reservoir that I already knew was there, and I just, it's just a pain in the ass trying to find the right, uh, the right fitting for it. Because sometimes uh, shops don't have the right size fitting that I need. I can change it myself, but it was just getting, the, getting my hands on the correct part, basically, was the... Uh, a little bit tedious. So I didn't, it was in the shop anyway, it's a real simple fix. I just had to go ahead and change that. And while they were doing the DOT, they also found the a, 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 a power steering fluid leak. This is typically New Avenue here. Uh, next light down will be Del Rosa. Anyway, um, yeah, coolant leak, power steering fluid leak, and oil leak. The coolant leak, I guess, was on lines at the top of the engine somewhere they went ahead and fixed that change out the hoses and the power steering system they just found out some uh, I guess there were some loose clamps 
giant frown before on the one that goes uh, the hips right up to the the back end of the the reservoir a while back. They're still leaking, I guess, just a just a slight bit. Yeah, it was enough where I had to I had to resurface it a couple of times, but it's not like uh, it's not like an every shift thing that I had to do. I wasn't too uh, overly concerned about it. Uh, the oil pan leak. Uh, there was, uh, the oil leak was the oil pan, though. And then it turned out that uh, yeah, I needed a new gasket. And when I took that down, also one of the uh, the threads for one of the bolts for the oil pan came out with the bolt. So when they put it back in, they had to put a helicoil in uh, so they could install the bolt in that position. And on that one, I know I'm, I'm going to see about getting the uh, see if the the dealer in Fontana can get charged for that because they're the ones who caused that. Uh, last year, you might remember, I had to get my uh, uh, my power steering pump, air compressor pump, uh, both replaced because the air compressor bearing failed and then got into my oil system. Uh, they found uh, oil particles in my uh, shaving, uh, oil parts in my uh, oil filter, and then they dropped the oil pan so they can inspect the bottom end of my engine and. So when I did that, this is that's when they caused the, uh, these problems. I used to not have ever uh, any leaks on my any oil system leaks before, and even then, uh, with that going on, I, I rarely ever had to resurface the engine oil. Now yeah, usually it still had enough uh, where I, it was it was adequate even by the time I was due for, I was coming up on my next PM service. So uh, yeah. It's, uh, so it wasn't too bad, but at the same time, it, yeah, it was messy down there. So I'm glad that they fixed that. Uh, again, I'm going to see if I get the, the have them charge the dealer or something for that, since their 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 own dealership in Fontana is the one that did it. This time I got it serviced in Hesperia. At the, it was a truck uh, repair shop right across the street from the new Amazon warehouse that's getting built. Uh, not far from where the pilot truck stop is. Uh, right here is our drop yard. Anyway, that's, uh, it used to just be some private company, but uh, Rush Truck Centers ended up buying it out and opened it up as their own in October. Okay, so my my load is supposed to be on trailer 5964, I believe it was. Let me double check it. I know it was a 59 number. I'm pretty sure it was 5964. Yes, that is indeed the trailer I'm looking for. Uh, come down here to the end of the alley here. Hang a right, and all of our trailers are right here. That's this, this is all our loaded trailers, and then over on the north end of our section here, and just on the north end of the building that's back there behind our trailers is where our empties go. All right, now we do get pretty nasty with the pothole stuff here. Five nine six four. Don't see it yet. There it is, right here. Okay, so I'll start my turn right before 4059 Bravo. That number sounds familiar. It's not yet. Uh, I don't think that's out on the calendar, is it? Alright, turn my spotlight on back there. Okay, so I can feel the fifth wheel making contact, but it's not making as much contact as I'd like it to. 
Uh, no, it's not him. I've seen that truck before. Um, it's just barely enough to where I have an empty trailer fill, and uh, but it's a loaded trailer. It should have more than 20 psi on it. Yeah, barely at 20. I want to see more than that before I start uh, hooking right in. base station. Oh, let me take myself out of driving status so I don't burn up clock and I don't need to burn. Because if I have any chance of making it to Deming, the Petrom Deming, yeah, because it's hard to do uh, unless I'm going, uh, unless I'm speeding. So I don't really need to go that far, but I, I might try to go there because I have a, my left rear the rear, yeah, and the left rear drive tire uh, need to replace. It's worn, so uh, the dealer doesn't do tires. So I, you know, I even asked him about it before. All right, so let's get hooked up, pre uh, pre tripped, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, we'll get rolling here. All right, guys, we're done pre tripping and all that. The trailer looks like it's in pretty good shape overall. It's not a new trailer, but it's actually an older one, but. It's all right, uh, as long as it's in good shape. All right, we'll yard move. Uh, I guess I'll just put drop hook. I don't want to burn drive time getting up to the guard shack. All right, so we'll get it. Actually, yeah. I usually wait till I get past the guard shack before I hit my put my seatbelt back on, but it's all right. Plenty of room between me and the next uh, and the other trailer, but just good practice still. I always wait. I pull out as far as I can, get the trailer as, as much as I can away from the whatever I'm next to before starting my turn. So there's never a worry about uh, tail swing hitting anything. Watch the tandems there and make sure I was going to clear that container there. Alright, uh, normally, I, I guess we'll get over here at the, we get to the, uh, make our turn on to uh, Del Rosa, I guess we'll start talking about that. Anyway, I was at the DMV earlier today to, uh, to update my medical cert for my CDL. I was waiting in line outside the building, waiting to get inside. Uh, some crazy woman uh, walking by. Uh, man, she had to been on some stuff. She was, she was on some F-bomb uh, filled tirade about whatever. I don't know. What's up? It's loaded. Okay. Yeah. It's a right turn only out of the yard. And uh, we'll go down to, uh, Le oh, what's that, Leland, Leland Shepherd Way. This is right there on the north end of the Stater Brothers Distribution Center. And uh, normally this time, I mean, normally when I leave here and I want to get over to I-10, I usually will not mess with, uh, You just won't mess with Tippecanoe Avenue. I don't like dealing with the traffic down there on the other end of it, but it's almost 9 o'clock. I don't think it'll be such a big transition to the Yeah, I've got to change my status when I was over there. So. so it's all right, it automatically threw me in drive mode. All 
Alright, so I was saying I normally have, uh, because I don't like the traffic over there, what I'll usually do is make the ride up here at uh, Tippecanoe, come back up to 3rd, take 3rd all the way across to Palm Avenue, which also is uh, Alabama Street, which intersects with I-10. Uh, but I'll go north on uh, Palm just one block over to 5th and then take 5th a short distance from there to the 210 freeway and then I'll take 210 down to 10. Uh, the lights, the, the traffic lights here on Tippecanoe to me are a pain in the ass. I'll almost never take Tippecanoe south of Mill Street. Uh, Mill Street would be the street that's right in front of where the truck entrance to the Stater Brothers DC is, which uh, Stater Brothers DC is right here to my left, right, right next to me on my left side. Uh, this time of day though, I don't think the traffic will be as bad, so I'll be more willing to go this way, but yeah, like I said, normally I'd rather just take 3rd, Palm, and 5th over to 210. Alright, it's going to be uh, between the deadhead, I mean, well, bobtail, I mean, not deadhead. Bobtail distance plus the loaded, be about a 1,530, 1,540 or so mile trip that I'm expecting. So, a little over 500 miles per shift is what it's going to uh, take to get there. Uh, no matter what, I'm going to need two 10 hour breaks along the way. So ideally, I want to get as close as I can, as far as I can on the first two shifts. And that way, if I don't have enough time where I can do a full 10 hour break, uh, right, you know, right by the customer, which I am. I'm familiar with them, but I've never been there. I picked up a load, one of these loads that go to them before, but I, ne I didn't actually deliver it myself. I ended up swapping off of that load. Um, I don't know that you, I'm not sure you can park nearby there so I'm expecting I maybe have to drive 250 even 300 miles possibly to uh, you know from wherever I do my last 10 hour break to make the delivery and then start deadheading from there to uh, a reload or something and probably be a little bit more limited on what I can do after I'm loaded if uh, assuming that I can pick something up right away Whatever the case, I want to have myself set up where I have uh, the, the flexibility where I can do that. Uh, you know, I'd like to be able to at least get far enough with whatever reload I have where I don't have to take an extra 10 hour break with it or I have to sit and wait for a later load to pick up because uh, I don't have the clock to get there more promptly. Now, if I, I don't know, if I, this should take right around two full days, and it is um, right around 11 p.m. Central Time right now. So I'm not going to have enough time to do a full 10-hour break by the time I get down there. So, with that in mind, I, yeah, I, I would prefer to get as far as I can down the road with the first two shifts. Give myself as short a uh, third shift as I can. Then I can do a split, possibly, if uh, if, they, if I even stay that long at the receiver. And run deadhead miles from there to wherever it's going to be, wherever I end up reloading. Um, I could end up reloading in Seguin, Texas, which is uh, about a half hour drive east of San Antonio. Or I could end up going up toward uh, Center, Texas. Uh, or even Carthage, I bet. Um, those are, or could even also end up in Bryan again, where I've, we've been doing a lot of uh, Sanderson Farms loads out of Bryan lately, so those are going to be the probable uh, reload uh, possibilities. Not the only ones, but the, the more uh, highly likely. Out of, out of the, okay, I'm going to move over here to the left because the uh, I-10 is coming right up. See, this is this was real easy to to get down here this time. Normally, uh, normally I don't have anywhere near this easy a time with all these lights that that I went through coming down here. It's 
especially the ones right here by Hospitality Lane and Harriman Place. Hospitality would be the street that I just passed. And this is Harriman Place right here. And then right up uh, after this is uh, I-10. Alright, so uh, yeah, I was talking about the, the woman going all kind of, kind of on some weird tirade. And then some guy was out in the parking lot just talking on his phone, minding his own business. And then the lady, she, well, she looks over at the parking lot at that guy, basically, while uh, she's walking by and saying, Don't fucking mess with me. Leave me out the fuck alone or something like that. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? She, uh, the guy was not even worried about it. He was on, his, on the phone with whoever he was with, not minding his own business. <laughs> It's like some of you guys might think that's sad what people do, uh, how people are in that position. No, sorry, I can't sympathize. They're the ones who put themselves in that position. Nobody forced them to put drugs in their in their bodies. Yeah, you know, a lot of them, uh, and most of them are like that because of drug abuse on their own part. I don't have sympathy for people who uh, want to screw their lives up with drugs like that. Now, some are just, I mean, sometimes they're actually just disabled vets or whatever. Or, yeah, you never know, could have mental issues, maybe because they were born to a drug addict, but never actually did drugs themselves. You never know, but, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I'm more apt to believe that a lot of them are on drugs. In fact, a lot of them use drugs while they're homeless because the, uh, that's how they that's how they cope with uh, pain or uh, being cold or whatever a lot of them could get out of their situations and people want to help them but most of them a lot of them don't want to help don't want the help so why should I have sympathy for them and then tonight I was uh, when I was uh, I had to stop at the pilot in Hesperia to get fuel because I, I was been low on fuel. I didn't know I'd have to uh, make a special trip out of the way to, to get fuel after I got my trailer picked up. So I went ahead and got fuel there and pilot. I came back out. I came back out to my truck after I went inside to grab a drink. And right when I'm pulling away, some dude walks up and uh, starts knocking on the side of my truck. I'm like, what the hell? Like I'm already starting to pull away, and he wasn't even there when I uh, when I got in my truck. And then he starts asking me if I had some kind of uh, antibiotic. So uh, I can't even remember what the hell the shit's called. I'm, I'm, I don't know much about drugs. Uh, one of those myosin, whatever, or something, centromycin, or I, I don't know, something along that line. Some kind of antibiotic, though, he was looking for. And, and then he's asking me for money for to help uh, so he can buy, you know, buy the antibiotics he needs. I'm like... Dude, I just got my truck. My truck just spent almost two weeks in the shop. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm pinching right now myself because of it. Not to mention, I just bought a car and uh, put $3,000 down on it out of my uh, out of my account. So that, you know, that hurt. Yeah, I was, uh, what did I, like I say, I'll, I'll, on my uh, investment account, I also do high risk stuff. So the stock market being down and didn't help the situation. Uh, it basically put me in a pinch situation where I um, um, don't have much uninvested cash to work with, put it that way. So yeah, tight, tight situation at the moment until the market comes back up and um, until I, I can actually start getting get more uh, get my better paychecks back since uh, the last two weeks I haven't run. The only reason I got a paycheck last week was because we got our holiday instead of pay. Uh, and I had a little bit, I had a, not even that long a trip on it. I think it was, let's see, is this guy's, I think, I can't tell if Amazon's lane is going to end, so I'm going to move over just in case. Yeah, that's actually an Amazon company truck. You don't see that very much. Let me get past this guy real quick. I don't want to get all caught up in this lane and then find out he... Damn it. No, 
I got a car passing on the right, and I'm only only you know over here because uh, I thought Amazon might need the way. Couldn't see what exactly was close, so rather give benefit of doubt there and uh, give him the option to come over if he was going to need it. So, you know, yeah, I've been kind of a tight situation. Like I said, last week, I only, I mean, I, I would have probably gotten a really small settlement on a paycheck. I got an okay one because of the, or no, I probably would have been in the hole, actually, had I not actually gotten that. Uh, it really is going to end. Hope you know. I hope you're going to get off the freeway there or hurry up. Anyway, uh. I'd say, and I know this week's going to be a rough week. Uh, I'm going to probably have to do uh, a tea call by Thursday afternoon, and uh, yeah, just to even avoid having a very much negative settlement at all, uh, if you know, possibly. And that way, I can at least set myself up where I have some kind of paycheck, a uh, decent paycheck, the following week. Yeah, it is what it is. Normally, it would have been no problem. I could have even been able to sit longer, but uh, the down payment on the car and the markets being down kind of put me in a tighter situation, so yeah, that, that's comfortable. So, got to work through it. It's all right. And let's like say my truck will be paid off in July, so I'm kind of looking forward to that, and uh, that'll kind of increase my, uh, my, rent, my money flow, my profit flow, whatever. Uh, money that I can put back into those accounts. Anyway, we're in Redlands eastbound. Uh, so I think we got plenty of footage here. Uh, so the delivery is going to, the load is going to Wei Chong in Houston. It's uh, basically a, a, an Asian food market uh, place, whatever, a warehouse. Uh, they got Chinese, Japanese, Thai food, whatever. All those kind of stuff that they, that's uh, part of the manifest. So that's where I'm heading. That's over on the north. Oh, was it the northwest side of Houston or no west side of Houston or something? I can't remember. I'm gonna look on the map again. I don't, it's not too far, um, not too far north of I-10 if I remember right, and it's on toward the west side of Houston. So anyway, that's what we got going on, and uh, we'll probably. I don't anticipate swapping off this load, so we'll probably have some more uh, footage for you guys again when uh, it's time to make that delivery in, in Houston, right? So, um, anyway, you guys all have a great night. And uh, I appreciate you guys taking out watching, and we'll probably see you guys in Houston, right? Thanks, have a good one.